Imagine a very tiny human, so small its brain and other organs are the size of rice. Now imagine this microhuman testing everything from prescription drugs to toxins and chemicals. A version of this microhuman is real. One of the challenges in the organs on a chip business is that when you're building a millihuman or a microhuman, you don't have very much fluid to work with. That's where this invention comes in. Also created by Vanderbilt, it tests exceptionally small amounts of fluid taken from the organs on a chip. Could this be the breakthrough that finally flips that equation? Researchers at Harvard University's Wyss Institute call it an organ on a chip. The device, no bigger than a USB stick, has distilled down to its key features what makes an organ an organ. They started by creating a lung using a method inspired by computer microchip manufacturing, which works at the same size scale as the living cells in our body. The scientists lay down lung cells on a membrane with blood cells moving on the other side. Then they add the magic ingredient. The device is stretchy. And when you have the suction applied, it stretches the middle channel, and when you release it, it comes back. So it actually breathes back and forth. The organ on a chip has already won the Design of the Year Award from the Design Museum in London, and it's on display at the MoMA in New York. Over the past six or seven years, we've been able to develop organs on chips, which are little miniaturized vascular networks created with computer microchip manufacturing that are lined by living cells to recapitulate the normal physiology of living human organs, the complex functions including inflammation and, and infection and a logical next step on this was to see like could you actually see what would happen with cigarette smoking with the organs on chips we have the cell tissue organ level but we had to develop an apparatus that would hold cigarettes that would light cigarettes that would control puffs and then would collect the smoke and then deliver it to the air channel of our lung chip and this is important because usually when people study effects of cigarettes on cells and culture they, they take a liquid extract of the cigarette, but we experience real smoke. To be able to model COPD disease in a more clinically relevant manner, we developed this platform, so this is smoking lung chip. The first component is a microrespirator. Microrespirator is kind of meant to mimic the rib cage and diaphragm, so when you inhale or exhale, you need to pull in air and push it out. The second component is the small airway chip itself. The third component is the smoke machine. So think about it as the mouthpiece, where you have the smoker actually push the cigarette into their mouth and actively take it in. And the fourth component is the software that controls the breathing profile and the smoking behavior. Parameters like how many puffs you do per cigarette. So you have the architecture of the cells as you have in the human lungs. You have geometry similar to the small airway and you have exposure, which is physiologically relevant.